everybody. Um, so uh, I feel like I feel like we're on the same wavelength because you were saying some things, and I was like, "Don't give away my my talk." Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, first, I just want to thank Crimson Cup and thank Creative Mornings for having me here. This is really exciting. Um, I've just uh, I've only been to a couple of Creative Mornings now. I'm just getting to know uh, about the organization. Uh, I'm still relatively new to Columbus, uh, and I'm really excited to be a part of it, and I look forward to coming to many more. Uh, so as you know, today, uh, this month's word is pioneer. Uh, and when I started thinking about what I could share with you all that was related to the idea of the pioneer, uh, I couldn't get the very literal American pioneers out of my head. So rather than fight it, I went with the flow, and that led me to the question, how can we learn from the American pioneer to be better artists, designers, and creatives? And I learned a new technology here. Yes, all right. <laughs> My phone is now a clicker, it's very cool. So, uh, so when you hear the word pioneer, uh, this might be what pops into your mind. This is what came to mind anyway. Uh, the wagon trains of the 19th century American pioneers, frontiersmen headed westward across the continent, ready to grow the United States into what it is today. But I'm an academic, so of course I went back and looked at the origin of the word. And in fact, pioneer is actually a 16th century French word uh, that was used to describe the foot, a foot soldier or a workman. Um, while we mostly celebrate the word now, its roots come from peon or pawn. Ouch. Uh, but there's something to be gained from that definition as well. Creatives are nothing if not hard workers. However, before I start talking in detail about what we can learn from American pioneers or the pioneering spirit more broadly, I, I think it's important that we stop and acknowledge, acknowledge that there are some negatives to this word. These days, the word pioneer celebrates people, entrepreneurs, going where no one has gone before. Historically, though, that's not often that accurate. Usually, someone has been there before, and those someones too often got pushed out when pioneers discovered new places. The word can be problematic because it ignores the fact that typically pioneers were not the first. They were trampling over others. And as we come off the heels of Columbus Day, I think it's important to take a second to remember that Columbus wasn't actually the first. And American pioneers after him, as they headed west over uncharted territories, weren't traveling through empty lands. They were going to lands occupied by indigenous peoples. Today, the word pioneer is often used interchangeably with disruptor. And if you think about our history, that's what a, the American pioneer did, quite literally at times. They disrupted the lives of people who were already there. And as we think of contemporary pioneers and celebrate folks who move into new areas and new ideas, we must remember that the people who were already there don't necessarily feel as though they were in this undiscovered land. Uh, that there were homes being disrupted, and we must consider how pioneering can impact the less dominant cultures and populations. In short, there's a lot to be gained from embracing the positive aspects of both the foot soldier uh, worker definition as well as the frontiersman explorer definition, but we must do so without erasing the historic cultural implications of the word. To me, pioneers are synonymous with the frontier whether that's a geographic or scientific or spatial frontier. The pioneer is someone who is forging ahead for the better, boldly going where no one has gone before. Pioneers are innovators, disruptors. They're foot soldiers as well as the visionary thinkers. They made America, for better and worse, what we are today. And it's accurate, I think, to really call up our artists, designers, creatives as pioneers. They're often the first to go into places to see possibilities, either on a canvas, in a corner of the internet, or even in physical space. To see possibilities where others just see the status quo. To see possibilities where others see nothing. So today I'm going to share five characteristics of the American pioneer and how those attributes uh, apply today to creatives. So number five, pioneers have a strong vision for the future. Life on the East Coast was pretty good. Nobody had to go west. Whether it was pushing the frontier westward to occupy new territories or creating new settlements, it took a strong vision to do what no one else would. The pioneers who went westward, they were envisioning a future for themselves that no one had laid out before. They were envisioning a new future, and yet they also had to be flexible and be able to quickly innovate. When you're going west with your wagon train and you come across a mountain, you have to come up with a solution. 
How many of you remember your grade school American history? If you do, just think about the Cumberland Gap. You gotta find the valley. You have to create the alternate route. You may have to ford a river every now and then. Your path will twist and wind, but you'll get there with persistence, vision, and innovation. Artists, designers, creatives are pioneers, clear and simple. They're often pioneers in neighborhoods. They see possibilities. Here in Columbus, artists, pioneers have envisioned a creative stronghold in Franklinton. And of course, here in Columbus, we're trying to do it the right way. We don't just take everything wholesale from the old pioneers. We're working, we're trying to work collaboratively with the people who are already there, forging a new art, design, tech corridor in Franklinton that doesn't just steamroll over what was there before. One might even say that American pioneers were the original design thinkers. Today we talk a lot about design thinking as a way of developing new ideas through iteration, human-centered research, and collaboration. So just as the frontier pioneers were rebuilding their wagons on the fly as they broke down, making them better on the trail, and were forging pathways through mountains, artists and designers are working together to lead the way in building neighborhoods, developing new ideas, solving problems. So, vision for the future, but trial and error is a reality, and it leads to better work. And at least you don't have to rebuild entirely your new home every time you get it wrong. Four, pioneers keep life simple. You've got to keep it simple when you're making a cross-country journey with your whole family in a wagon. And while there's a renewed fascination with the world of DIY, keeping it simple isn't just about making your own butter or making horseshoes in Brooklyn to sell for 50 bucks a piece. It's really about finding a balance and cutting out the clutter. By editing things out of your life, it gives you more space to create. Pioneers carried with them only what they had to, what they absolutely needed. Our American pioneers were into the life-changing habit of tidying up before anyone else. They had the bare minimum and knew the purpose of every item they owned. In modern days, some of the most inspiring artists and designers that I know have the ability to strip down to what they need to create. And it's not just about editing down your stuff. It's about editing down how you use your time and what's important to you. I was inspired by hashtag Babes Unplugged, a challenge by Creative Babes a few weeks ago to encourage women throughout the city to pull away from social media for a week. I'd love to see a sampling of the participants' productivity during that time. What problems were solved, what ideas were generated, what relationships grew. So take the time to look at the things that are absolutely necessary to thrive in your practice. It's when you're working with those that you'll be most inspired. Three, pioneers are rebels. Let's take Laura Ingalls Wilder. Whether you knew her from the Little House in the Prairie books or Melissa Gilbert playing her on the TV show, and if you don't know her, go read some Little House in the Prairie, watch the show, you might think of her in a, in a cute, as a cute little girl in a dress, but Laura Ingalls Wilder was always getting dirty. She never wore her bonnet, and she always knew, or she was always known to get into a mud puddle battle or two with Nellie Olson. <laughs> Laura wasn't happy about the status quo, and neither are pioneers. Laura rebelled against expectations of wearing that pretty dress and staying clean. And even in her subtle way, she questioned authority in the systems around her, whether it was breaking pause rules or fidgeting in church. Pushing against authority, asking pointed questions, being different from others are keys to creative expression. We see that today in the work of Krista, Krista Suh and Jaina Zweiman, who are modern day pioneers in the realm of public protest through visual iconography. While they weren't the first women to use crafts to make a symbol, Betsy Ross, anyone? Their pink pussy hats became and still are a symbol for those who question the status quo, for those who demand more for women than what our society is offering. So be a rebel. Rebel against the constraints of the art world and society at large. Two, pioneers band together. Collaboration is a key tool and a distinguishing factor for our world here in Columbus. American pioneers traveled in packs and founded settlements to make themselves stronger. Their communities saved them from starvation, from wolf attacks, from measles, snake bites, dysentery, typhoid, and all sorts of other things that could kill you in that Oregon Trail game. <laughs> I see 
the banding together and the collaborative spirit of American pioneers when I think about the Smart Cities Project. It's a vulnerable thing to ask the entire city to be part of a challenge to move us forward into an unchartered territory of transportation. It's got all the elements, hard work, creative problem solving, some rebellion, and of course, collaboration. This is a project that we will all work on together in some sm small or big fashion. It's that good old Columbus way. And none of this pro important project is getting accomplished without the artists and designers providing the creative backbone to the whole thing. When I think about banding together, I can't help but recognize collaboration as a key strength uh, that is paramount here in the Midwest. While I was born in the Midwest, I spent much of my life on the West Coast. It's tough out there. People aren't real. Uh, and I know that's a generalization. Uh, they are real. They do have flesh and bones, but you know. But there's this surfaceness, I think, often to uh, West Coast life. Uh, and, uh, and as I was preparing to come back to the Midwest to take this job at CCAD, I took notice of the genuine care folks show for one another here. It took me a minute to remember that I could rely on others, that I could share who I truly was and allow me to be me. We think about pioneer pioneers going west, but for me the most pioneering thing I could do was come back to the Midwest. So work together in your office, in your art, in your creative problem solving, you'll be stronger for it. Finally, one. Pioneers tell their authentic stories. Okay, so not every American pioneer wrote a series of books that turned into a hit, uh, hit maybe, a TV show. But writing things down and telling your story is a damn good idea. Stories are now more than ever the way we can relate to one another, learn from one another. In coming to Columbus to be president of CCAD, I've had to tell my story a fair number of times. In my first 18 months here, I've managed to create a pretty good one-minute narrative about who I am. I grew up in Chicago, but I spent 20 years in California. I came here and I was shocked by the cost of living. I love that my nine-year-old can ride his bike around our incredible suburban neighborhood. I talk about how I try to get my hipster friends to move here and was super justified, by the way, when Yelp called Columbus the number one hipster city in the country last week. <laughs> Columbus is amazing. Do I miss the Bay Area? Well, I miss a good mission-style burrito every now and then. <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, collaboration requires sincerity and authenticity. There's no room for inauthentic hipster irony if you're faced with real threats. We are in a moment here in the United States where we celebrate that kind of ironic sense of being anti-everything and not having a sincere connection to anything. And this can often be a big part of the art world. But we can't afford to be ironic anymore. I'm a Gen Xer, we invented irony, and I'm saying it's time for a little more authenticity. When you have a life or death journey ahead of you, you can't afford to be distant. You have to be authentic and tell the true story of who you are so you can build a sense of empathy. We as artists, designers, and creatives need to embrace the spirit of authentic storytelling because we are all on a life or death journey. Our values are being questioned, and our foundation as creatives, thinkers, believers in fact are being questioned as well. And in this new era, there are so many stories going untold. DACA students have stories that need telling. Women whose employers won't pay for birth control anymore have stories that need telling. Our neighbors struggling with the opioid epidemic have stories that need telling. Empty pedestals are waiting for new monuments new stories to fill them. There are endless life or death stories, and it's going to take more than a 140 character ironic retort to tell them. <laughs> Call me an idealist, but I believe artists and designers do more than bring beauty to the world, though that's incredibly important too. They are the storytellers who can change minds and change the world. So while you'll hear my story complete with its funny sound bites about how little NPR asks for, an, for on fun drive here versus the Bay Area, my real story is this. I do love my idyllic neighborhood, but sometimes the Trump signs down the street scare me. I do miss burritos. <laughs> I miss them a lot. <laughs> I have so many people telling me where to get a good burrito around here, but you know, sometimes you still need that mission burrito. 
but even more so, I miss dancing at the gay bars in, with my friends in the Bay Area. I do love the Midwestern friendliness and politeness, but I inevitably stumble in every doorway when a man insists on opening the door for me. And shucks, yes, I sure am young to be a college president, but I'm older than I look, and I've worked my ass off to get here. But even so, sometimes I look around and wonder what the hell I'm doing. And as a cancer survivor, I know what life or death truly looks like. My road to Columbus, back to the Midwest, taught me to pack what was important. My family, my passion for educating the next generation of artists and designers, and my strong work ethic. And it took me from a bubble where everyone thinks the same to a place where I could be living right next door to someone who doesn't believe in basic human rights for everyone. I've been presented with my own Cumberland Gap, my own river to ford, my own winding path. And the best way forward for me in my community, my artistic community, my CCAD community, my Columbus community, is to be true to myself. To trade in silence and irony for caring, compassion, and a desire to lead a fight for all that is right. To recognize the true weight and responsibilities of a pioneer. So I'll for forge forward being my true self. And as artists, designers, and creatives, so should you. You're a better collaborator when you are. And while you're at it, write down the lessons you've learned so you don't repeat your mistakes and so you can help others along the way. So in closing, we are all here because we are creative. We're all here because we are on a journey. And if we look to our history, both the positives and the negatives, we can chart the course for a better future. Be pioneering. Have a vision. Embrace simplicity. Work together. Be a rebel. And above all else, be authentic and tell your story. Thank you.